Welcome back to part 7 of generating functions. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at integer partitions. Uh, well, this is going to be the second video on integer partitions. In the last video we looked at equations of the form na plus b plus c equals nk minus 1. And we found a relatively nice solution using generating functions and what I call the the main sort of the coefficient space, which I wrote as uh, sort of a matrix. Um, so we're going to look at a new kind of equation, and that's going to be uh, the type of nk a plus nb plus c is equal to nkr minus 1. So nkr are positive integers, and um, a, b, and c are, are, are solutions which are non-negative. Um, so we have an example that I'm going to use, uh, mostly because it has a very elegant form. Uh, or it, it's uh, it's beautiful in in regards to sort of the other half of the problem, but but I'll 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 show we'll get there. Uh, it, it is six a plus three b plus c. Um, and I guess I need to pick something. I'll just go with something small, like seventeen. We don't need it that big. Um, and now. So we can transform this into another generating functions problem, and that is uh, finding the x to the seven or the the coefficient of x to the seventeenth and this uh, multiplication of polynomials. Um, so now we have so we have like our original starting polynomial, right? And before we just had two of these, and it's easy enough to to multiply by that. And that's why we were able to get such a nice answer to our problem. However, this time we at least have one, but we we don't have a lot to work with. So, um, but but sort of I like in math, it's it's nice to do the things that are easier first. If you start with an easier problem, um, then then sometimes you get an easier solution. So what we have here is 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 I'll write down. Uh, the coefficient matrix for this polynomial, and that is just a one, and you know, ones on this column, and then the rest of everything is zero, because uh, this is x to the zero, this is x to the six, and and so on. And so when we multiply by one plus x plus x squared, and so on, we're going to get our partial sums again, and just like in the last problem, it's just going to be. The, the first row is all ones, and the second row is all twos, and the third row is all threes, and so on. So I'll write that. So now we have what I sort of just described. And so now we're multiplying. So, so what's left to multiply is this polynomial, right? One plus x cubed plus x to the sixth, and, and so on. And this uh, uh, this will it will give us partial sums, but only at uh, sort of every third index, right? Um, and and so uh, so I'll I'll basically ro walk through the process of of what it is. So first we have ones, right? So we have one, one, one. So the first three, or we basically have chunks of three, is what we'll get. The first three are the same. Be, and then once we hit this x cubed term, we're adding, we're doing the partial sums uh, of every of every third thing. So this will be so. So now we have another one. So we have two, 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 and then we're adding a two. So here we'll have four, four, four. Uh, nine, nine. Uh, that's not adding by two. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this will be six, six, six. Um, and then if and then and then we add a three, so we get nine, nine, nine. Add another three, and we get twelve, twelve. So these are the first few. Um, and now we see here that, that I, I wrote out the matrix just 
ellipse uh, just big enough so that our answer is our answer is actually right here because uh, if we count this is this is x to the fifth um, this is x to the 11 this is x to the 17 so our answer is 12 right uh, at least for our example problem right our answer is 12 and we could say we're done but we could also look at this this array and and, and be wowed right on one side on one side of the because we can split this down the middle right on one side we see perfect squares and it's pretty easy to prove that we're getting perfect squares right we we add a if we add a 4 here we're going to get 16 um but on the other side we have um we have twice a triangular number right and that's where this nk stuff comes in right so if if i write it in the format of this of of what i of what i've described here we have n is 3 so n, so 3 k is 2 so 3 times 2 times a plus 3b plus c is equal to 3 times 2 r is 3 so this evaluates to 17 and so if i so so our answer is 12 right so we're getting that on this column and but not just this column right each all three of these columns right if i were to choose one of these it would be 2 times a triangular number and the triangular number corresponds to the row number which also corresponds to r just like in uh in the last one where where it dependent on k i, I sort of have a different definition of k but sort of r is 1 plus this constant divided by the leading coefficient that is what i'll call this and k is the leading coefficient and so our answer for the general problem is actually um, is actually k times r times r plus 1 over 2 and I think the the most beautiful thing about this is that this answer doesn't rely at all on n and and I kind of I, I show I actually show this to my uh, my math I don't know what to call it, a math circle a math club but um, so so in the previous video right we had the problem 3a plus b plus c is equal to 20 right we're actually establishing a bijection between this the number of solutions here which was 3 times um, times 7 times 8 over 2 and now I'm claiming if I pick k to be 3 so this is now k and r to be 7 I can pick any n and I'll, ha I'll still have the same number of solutions and so uh, what, will, what, what will that be so so if I pick um, so I have so I have 3n a plus n b plus c is equal to 21 n minus 1 uh, yes yeah so this the, these will these will have the same number of solutions I think that's I, I, I for one thing that's really cool and all but also if um, yeah yeah but for this problem right we have k equals 2 when we have k equals 2 we get these squares I think that's also really cool we don't get the the squared uh, pattern for for other values of k or at least for the, from what I've tested um, but for k equals 2 we get squares on the other side so we have squares and then we have multiples of of um, triangular numbers I think that's I think that's pretty cool um,
and then the, this bijection thing, I, I think that could show up on a problem like find the, the difference between the number of solutions in these two equations. And you're like sitting there like, what the hell? But it's actually, they have the same number of solutions, right? Because they have the same general form. It's that no matter what this n is, you have the same number of solutions. I think that's really cool because this this c right here doesn't at all depend on n, too. So it's like it's like we've got something like you know we we would like negative one minus c over n is equal to some junk, right? And it's like I I don't know I don't I don't even I don't have words to explain how how cool this is. Um, we just have a family of solution, a, a family of equations with the same structure that depend on some n, that have the same number of solutions. It's just really cool. Usually, you would see this when you, when you see this, you see some sort of infinite descent. Where I I might make videos on infinite descent, but none needed. We just solve the problem directly, get a formula that doesn't depend on n, one of the variables in our equation. I I think that's I think it's cool. I know I'm rambling a lot, and uh, most of you may have clicked off the video because I, I don't have anything more to say except for this. I just I didn't want to put this in uh, in with the last video because it was already like ten some minutes long, and I have a problem with making long videos because I like to ramble so much. As you can tell here, this video is probably already long in its own right, even though it doesn't have that much content. So I think I'm gonna stop there, as I realize my errors. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Uh, just recently, well, recently, this is probably going to come out days after it happened, as I'm overloading with videos, but just recently hit 250 subscribers. I think I got a bunch of subscribers from Dr. Payam's channel, just because I commented there, and then I just, like, uh, randomly got a bunch of comment, uh, uh, of subscribers. So th thank you for uh, subscribing. I hope you enjoy this content. Uh, maybe not nearly as much as I enjoy making it. It's just a, a joy. I, I don't know why. I just love math so much. But, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next videos.